Lord in heaven, please bless us as we read your word, for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, our key text that we said we'll be using for this entire week, that's my key text. Of course, but then we have other key texts that will be following each up every day. It's from Luke chapter 4 verse 18, that is the manifesto of Jesus Christ. And it says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. And friends, uh, I don't know if ever in your life you've ever had time to cry, Oh Lord, please heal me. Today I went through, I, I forgot, but today I went to a service that required me to be on a suit and a black one at that because we lost a less than one year old baby. My friend, we play football together with, lost a baby. And this baby just died from normal functions, normal things. Her mother is a doctor, a medical doctor. But they were feeding the baby and the baby just choked. And the baby died. Ivo Tupekiake. Dedicated 27th of February. Died. Dedicated in church. Central church. 27th February. Died. Uh, on Thursday. Last week. And it got me thinking like. Lord please. Kama uyu mama yake ni daktari. I know there is a sembuse word called. Kiswaili. Kiswaili word that says sembuse. I don't know. I, I believe this is right time to use it. Sembuse mimi. How much more. Maybe probably will be praying for that baby. That's the best I will do. But then it gets to a point where you cry out, Lord, please heal me. Because at times we go through pain. I want us to share a story about a leper. I want us to share a story about a leper. And there is this issue about leprosy. We are going to come to it. The text that will be guiding us is in Mark chapter 1 verse 40 to 44. But I'm going to read 40 and 41. 40 and 44, it's like the shortest miracle, like the shortest miracle that Jesus did, which was the first, not the last. The Bible says, now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, you're willing, you, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, and what Christ is going to say to you by the end of today, I am willing to be cleansed. Praise the Lord. Do you know how wonderful those words are? Jesus moved with compassion, not moved with pity. Not moved with humanity. Not moved with woye woye. Rather, it was compassion. Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing to be cleansed. Let me share to you about leprosy. How the society viewed leprosy. Number one, leprosy was a skin disease in general. Not the skin disease that we know as of it right now, but generally uh, any skin condition that you had was regarded as leprosy. Leprosy was synonymous with sin. It was regarded as sin. It was considered a total disability. If somebody had leprosy, you were considered disabled. Simply because, I, I'm, I'm about to explain. You were regarded as living dead. Yani, uko, lakini ya uko. You are alive but you're actually dead. You were expelled from the society. The next thing that will happen is if you, are, you had leprosy, you're expelled from the society and you are not eligible for divine favor. Do you know what it means not eligible for divine favor? You cannot be saved. If you had leprosy, it was regarded as punishment. So, if God has punished you, how can you be saved again thereafter? By the way, have you seen somebody? Hey, uh, uh, just shortly, let, let, I say this story every now and then when I'm talking about leprosy. Pray to God you don't find somebody with leprosy because my faith was tested at a particular point. I remember my faith was tested as a pastor. To talk pastors serious, pastors 30, 
choir members 30 tumeenda kuhubiri Tanzania we've gone to preach to Tanzania and so you know how Tanzanians look at us as if we are from the US you know like most modernized country so we even talking english then translating to kiswahili because you know to look sophisticated for a time being so we are there and uh, the, the guy who was with us said if you people are like this 30 of you we want to send you somewhere we want to send you to a place where you can pray for people who are sick na kwani iko nini si ndio pastors tumekuja kuombea wagonjwa kwanza you know when you come abroad you have this type kind of holiness within you you feel like you can solve any situation so this is us 30 of us on a bus 30 pastors 30 choir members it was called outreach choir from baraton we get on this bus all of us uh, go to uh, go to where we are supposed to go pray for the people who are sick now the problem was they had not told us what sickness it was because when we arrive there uh, choir wanakwanga na madoido za kuimbia imbia tu wimbo hapo pastors we know the words will be preparing just in case you told pray you know how you know we have powerful king james version prayers we pray when necessary some of us have that and so here was us tumeshasimama tunataka kushuka and then the tanzanian guy na kiswahili yao e karibuni kwenye mji wa ukoma I thought I didn't hear right. You know, what do you mean? Uh, the way he said it, you know, Tanzanians speak like poetry. So the way he said ukoma, probably it cannot be ukoma because we will not be here, ideally. Nobody gave us the disclaimer. So, karibuni kwenye mji wa ukoma. And then I'm like, aha. Continue. Eh, kuna, ma, kuna mashartis, I can't remember the Kiswahili because I'm not good in Kiswahili. That Kiswahili. Basically, it's, it's, it's a place of... Uh, uh, people who have leprosy have gathered together. Why? I have no idea. But basically they are together. Because they cannot live in the society. And they are on their last stages of life. On their last stages. Do you know what you will say at that point? You know, we are prepared to pray, God bring healing, God bring... You know, there are those things we know we say for when somebody is sick. Until you are told these people don't have a solution. Now number two is they are disfigured. Because leprosy attacking you. Especially the current leprosy. Nose falls off. One day you are. And then you put your nose down. That's how it feels like. Fingers start falling off. Toes start falling off. Your lips start falling off. Any vestige, anything that is outer on your body, your ear, such basically is the body that remains. And then from there, your hands start having, it's like sores. They are mucari, muca, muca substance. And so, you can imagine these people in their last stages of about death, there is no healing for leprosy. Then, I assume, especially because it was Tanzania. And then, happened ndiyo tunambua pastors na watu wakwaya, tuende tukawaombe. Everybody was like, Mungetuambia, Kabbalah. Because definitely, Mimi, I will not have come. Remembering, I have taken six years kusomea leprosy, and I it was kwa Bible, and I know how serious it is. I would have not been willing, because there are things you don't risk. Kuna vitu you don't risk, naturally. Eh, lakini kwani, wanataa kujua. Awa tuwa ukoma, wacha ni waite tuive, because even that's how the Bible calls them. Watu ukoma na fura, for the first time, wametembelewa na wachungaji. Wametembelewa na watu wakwaya. Fura, shangwe na nderemu ya kitizaidi. Kwani, in our minds, we are calculating like, nitasema naenda cho, alafu nitajua vile nitafanya. Walikuja wakasimama injia mlango. Ea basi, ready to welcome us. <laughs> Simutoke. Hapo ndiyo unakumbukanga, by the way, I'm still a student. Watch a lecture as well. <laughs> I may be pastor, but sijafikisha kabisa. Niko kidogo, niko kidogo. Hata sija graduate. Let us decide later. I'm telling you, they waited for us outside the door. <laughs> the instructions were, msiogope. Don't fear. As long as you wash your hands with soap, you cannot get infected. So once you greet them, wash your hands, but don't breathe in where they are. I don't even know how that is possible because basically they are here next to me. How am I supposed to do with breathing? You cannot go hugging somebody. 
Anyway, to cut the story short, that's what happened. We wacha akina vile wako na furaha kusalimia wa Kenya, kusalimia watu wako sawa, kusalimia wachungaji. It was ile salamu ya kuko na unajua kuna salamu, kuko na salamu ya kiluya ile mrefu. Yeah, hata anakuongesha hivyo. And you feel things inside you like yeah, I know, I know I'm supposed to. Yeah, but and then there mtu anakusalimia na ana ana vidole. So you don't know how to shake that hand because if you shake it ni kama unamshikilia around it. And they are so cheerful and wamepanga line hapa so unamaliza ni kama ubatizo welcoming unasalimia next and then it was so hard for me to struggle until until moja akafanya hats you you love thought it is a movie by the way vile kila mtu alienda tu chini asifu ya bai you know because we were told you should not see. So alifa, me alifa, hats. Everybody, everybody went like, you know, vizuri ni kama tunaka tisisi wate, bow down, sha, tukateremuka tisisi wate. You've not met leprosy yet until you see how serious it was. That was the society. Let alone society. Biblically, it was something different. Because biblically, even in terms of Leviticus 13 and 14, you were diagnosed by a priest. This was not for medical reasons. You were supposed to go to a priest. And the priest will identify the white spot on you and decide this white spot, is it leprosy or not? They will, you will go the first seven days and akwambiye, enda urudi. Enda urudi. For seven days, every seven days. Because this punishment was so great that... A, a misdiagnosis will render you dead. Number two, anything touched, anything touched by a man of leprosy was considered unclean for seven days. So, for example, moja wenu akona leprosy, akalie yo kiti. That seat is unclean for the next seven days. So you cannot sit, you cannot hold this mic. Basically, you cannot be anywhere around people as we've seen in terms of the society. Third, if a human being touched anything, for example, I am the one who's unclean, and so I touch this mic, and somebody else, the choristers come and touch this mic, and then like, oh Lord, pastor is unclean, John is unclean, you're supposed to run back home, for a full day, stay indoors, wash your clothes, wash your body, and don't come out until evening, until the end of the day. As if that is not enough, if a house had someone with leprosy, it was supposed to be broken down and demolished. Because you could not, yani, pale uli gonjekea, pray to God that uku gonjekea hostel. Because if uli gonjekea hostel, the entire hostel is supposed to come down. Simply because you had leprosy. This was not something simple. It wasn't something small. Cleansing was different. This was a disease that could only be helped through a sin offering, high soap, and a lot of water. So friends, let me tell you, if you've ever been sick, I want you to imagine now this young man. I want you to imagine this man. When he cried out to the Lord, heal me, what he actually meant. When he said, heal me. Uh, the way the Bible describes him, most likely he was married. Because if he was not married, he would have said a young man who was a leper. But it says a leper. So probably this man was married. And when he saw that white spot, the heart stopped. Like, oh Lord. A kind of a priest, the priest was like, oh I'm assuming the priest even knew him. I'm like, eh, mtu wangu, ni kubaya. Ebu wenda, ebu rudi kwanza. Seven days, the spot became bigger. Started turning white. Oh, Lord. I honestly, iki tunimbaya. Wachana na watu wenu, because uki washikisha shida, utabumoyo nyumba. Go and start living outside. And this man, thereafter, at the end of 21 days, when the priest pronounced him, and clean. He was supposed to start shouting so that people leave the road. Because if he touched a Pharisee, 
he's supposed to be hit by stones. So when you get leprosy, when the priest will pronounce you, you have leprosy, you are supposed to go out of the temple shouting and clean and clean and clean until you go out of the town. So I can imagine those are shattering words when the priest said, my guy. You guy, my guy. Probably. I don't know. Priest, why is You are unclean. Say that again. Yeah, you are unclean. I wanted to say it in Hebrew, but in a, in a kama to smatusi in some language, so I didn't want to attempt. And so this man is supposed to walk out of this place shouting and clean and clean and clean. And as he goes out of town, people are like, wait! Uyo! That guy! It's like there is a back, at the back of your hand, there is somebody saying, uja mako da ukimwe. Do you know how that sounds? That stigma. It's like somebody walking around with COVID. Once somebody, in, it's, you know, I have friends who have COVID and they don't even want to say because we have, a, we've stigmatized COVID. Now here was somebody who was supposed to shout, let alone people gossiping, supposed to shout and say, and clean and clean and clean. Then the news gets to the wife. Like, why? Your wife has been told this. I mean, umeski, uyu ni bwaneyako nuliskia kwa clean. Then the wife is like, what do you mean? And she will run out, but she cannot hug her husband. She cannot say hi to her husband. She is not supposed to come near six meters before her. The children, she was, he was used to taking the children to school every day, I'm assuming. He used to take the children to walks, to parks, to whatever. He cannot be with them. And now the father and the wife and the children can look at each other and the man shouts to his children, to his wife, to his family, I am unclean, don't touch me. And so this man walks anapewangoya black anava. He used to have a house. Now he no longer has a house. He can only live outside Jerusalem. Uko kwa mawe. Uko, akai uko. I can imagine the loving wife carrying food on one day. Akampelekea food, lakini awezi rudi na hizo saani. Anaikelea saani hapa, and he runs all the way, and then he sees the husband eat from that plate. But he cannot carry the plate home back to wash it. That was day one. Na imagine wakakula na saani zote, wakakula na zile vikombe kubwa zote, wakaanza kukula na sufuria, until there was nothing else to eat from. So this man, by the time he sees Jesus, he's so desperate because he has got no other choice. Have you ever felt like you have no choice in life? Guys, let me tell you, if you've never felt like you have choice in your life, listen to me about this. Tell me, tell Lord, heal me Lord. I know some of us here, we need healing from something that happened long ago. Rape. Somebody here was raped. And it has disturbed your mind. It has disturbed you for a very long time. I know somebody here was molested. Yes, you were molested. And I think, I have never shared this, but I think it's time to share it. I, for a long time, I was anti-ladies. For a very long time. Even right now, I don't know what to do. Because my first sexual experience was by a lady who was so huge and big. Invited me to her house. I was after, I just completed, uh, I had just completed form four. So that was, that was the year, that was the year 2000. Yes, that was the year 2000 when I completed form four. And so, because I'm a pastor's kid, the lady told me, uh, John, siuneza nipitia pa nikuulize vitumbili tatu. And because I was always a pastor, uh, since long, I was used to teach Pathfinder. She was the Pathfinder leader. So she called me over. When she called me over, I went to her house. Not a house, she had a shop. Ambayo knew my kona nini. So to akane, tukanza kupanga about Pathfinder. There was a company that was coming up. Uh, so she told me, Badala wonge ukua apa, si wingie na, mlango ya nyuma. I didn't think it's I didn't think it's harmful or anyway. I get there and I see her, she's seated, she starts, we start talking, 
then she holds my hand and puts me down and told me una ogopa nini at for once i was very confused in my life number one, as a man i don't know if that's possible you know every all every day in my mind i knew rape is for ladies it's not for men i knew that so i didn't think like it's even possible let alone biologically i i was i was brought up knowing uh, erections only happen when you're willing I, I can't remember what happened because tears were coming out of my eyes. I didn't, I am a man, but I didn't know I am helpless in my life. That thing scarred me. Yes, we didn't have sex, but whatever she did, it scarred me for so long. I think this is the first time I'm speaking about it after I read, prepared about this. I couldn't talk to ladies completely. I was very antisocial for a lot of time. I thought of revenge. I thought of suicide. I didn't even know how to stand before God. And so whenever I go through this, or rather whenever a lady accuses me of something, or whenever a lady says something that is not true, it just shatters me completely. And that's why I'm praying to God today, Lord, I, amongst any one of you who's going, who went some through something like me, may the Lord heal us. I'm praying for someone today who's going through stress and depression. Somebody who's suffered long enough, like it's just enough, it's too much. I, am, I can only pray, I can only ask God, please Lord, if there is anyone amongst you with a leprosy of stress and depression, now it's time to cry out to God and tell God, Lord, please, if you're willing, take this away from me. That's all. I know somebody here has got low self-esteem. Low self-esteem. You don't like the way you look. Like, you don't like your face. Just that. You don't like how your body is. You, or somebody, or something like that. You're going through, you know, you despise yourself simply because of where you come from or anything that has happened. Let me tell you, now is that day. Today is that day when you tell Lord, Lord, please heal me. I'm really sincerely praying you can do that. Somebody else went through an embarrassing episode. I know of a lady who committed suicide because she fell. She fell in public and she had, she had not put on pants. So when she fell, everything was open. The embarrassment was so much, she committed suicide. And I can't imagine somebody's going through the same thing here today. It's not fair you carry this burden for that very long. I can imagine there is a man here who's so embarrassed because somebody found you at your helpless state. Don't worry. Take it to the Lord in what? In prayer. Cry out to the Lord, heal me. There are situations or situations that changed you. You went through life. Your parents one day embarrassed you. Your sister, your siblings did something that has changed your entire life. Now it's time to tell Lord, heal me. May anyone going through anything, and I'm praying today, anyone going through anything that looks offensive, that looks challenging, may the Lord help you to heal from it. Let, that, let whatever you're going through not describe you. Let it not be your description. Let you describe what you want to be in this life. Honestly, young people, I am pleading with you today. Do not be a composite of what people think about you. Do not project yourself according to what the lecturer said or according to how you failed because there is a time that you need healing is a time like today. It is not as serious as leprosy. It is not as serious. The man with leprosy, let me tell you, he didn't want degrees. There is a point where you tell God, Saizi Mungu, I don't want degrees. I don't want, I know you can work for degrees. I can work for money. I can work for success. I can work for titles. Lord, right now, the thing that disturbs me is in my mind. And Lord, if you're willing, just please, please Lord, make me clean. That's all I'm pleading for. Do not ask for human things that you can work out for. Degree, to Teresa Tafuta. Beauty, we can look for it, by the way. Let me tell you by the way, you're, pu you, you, you're pure, you're wonderful, you're beautiful, you're handsome. You don't know it yet because you don't have money. Because number one, beauty is not determined by how you look at it. 
kamera pia ni muhimu usidanganye watu huku nje wanakaa hapo ni kamera si ati ni nini the camera can decide those of you doing graphic design you know you can change anyone into anything stop having stress about things you we can work on hiyo hata sisi wenyewe tunaweza kuchangia camera i promise you look for things that need healing tell god today heal me that's what you need to look out for because at the moment i cannot imagine you here fighting for anything else not what the world can offer take what the lord offers today that is an complete healing you know jesus invitation is still open he is asking what can i do for you guys honestly speaking i am sorry i wish i would say it uh, better but because time is up what can the lord do for you you know this man the bible says uh uh he told jesus if you're willing you can make me clean he didn't say lord if you're willing help me just graduate or lord if you're willing just give me money he told lord just make me clean clean here is about purity i would have used greek words but there's no need for me to get into those where it means completely removing filth and dirty things from you and turning you into a wholesome person cry out to the lord today do you know what jesus said there is something important jesus moved with compassion stretched out his hand this is the first time that this man has been touched by somebody else this is the first time that he has been hugged by somebody else i wanted to do that demonstration then nikakumbuka mimi ni pastor by the i don't want to hug somebody let a shida but have you ever been hugged and told it's okay what are these hugs zingine za taking advantage somebody take somebody hugging you and you're like it's been so long since i was hugged by the way i really felt that jesus touched this man not only touched him but hugged him this is a man who was not allowed to touch anyone a man who was not allowed to talk to anyone a man who was not allowed to touch anything but for the first time human beings may not touch me but jesus will hug you human beings may say you're ugly but jesus will get to you human beings may think of you as your worst you may even think of yourself as a worst person but let me tell you Jesus is always moved with compassion he will touch you and he says i am always willing i am willing this 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 tense is called genitive in greek it means now then i mean it means past present and continuous so god is saying i have always been willing i am willing now and i will always be willing to cleanse you each and every day it is you who decides do you want to be healed or not This is my picture of calm. At the end of it all, I just want to be calm. What heavenly music. That's what we want to end with. Let's rise up. Let's rise up uh, and do this song again because of time. I have to finish up here. What heavenly music. Take particular context of stanza 3. Take particular context of stanza 3 because that is where all our issues are. Song number 452 
as I said, uh, stanza three always uh, gives me that encouragement. Though dark are the waters, waters. Though dark are the waters, and rough is a wave, do you still need healing? Honestly, let me ask you, guys. Let's close our eyes. Let's close our eyes and pray. Is there anyone? Don't look at me. Don't look at your neighbor. While eyes closed, is there someone who's gone through a traumatizing, painful episode that uh, has always uh, threatened them, that defines them, that makes them unable to be themselves? Is there anyone, and do you want us to pray for healing about it? Just lift your hand without, uh, without opening your eyes. If you've gone through something that was so painful, you just want to tell God, Lord, if you're willing, make me clean. Just lift up your hand so that I can pray. Lord in heaven, look at us raising our hands. I don't even want to see who, maybe one, went through a period in their life that was embarrassing, traumatizing, painful. In the name of Jesus, Lord, heal them and make them clean. If there is anyone who is going through shame, if there is anyone who cannot forgive, if there is anyone whose parents have traumatized them, their brothers, siblings, people close to them, Lord, in the name of Jesus, may you bring healing and may today be that day in which we go simply because we have found healing in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.